Hey guys, Kellen back with Inside Out Precision, and today we are talking stabilizers. So, if you've been looking at stabilizers, your head might be spinning a little bit because there are so many options on the market, and you would be correct in assuming that they gotta kinda all be somewhat the same, right? And there can't be that big of a difference between all these stabilizers. And for the most part, you would be correct. But there are a couple really key things that you wanna look for, whether it be uh, hunting stabilizers, or I'll get into the long bars here in a moment for a target setup. And with hunting stabilizers, the, the biggest thing is that you want to look for a bar that is, the bar itself is really, really light. So these are actually both spider archery stabilizers. And without the end cap weights on here, these bars are extremely light. We're talking maybe two and a half, three ounces of the bar itself. And all the weight, actually goes on the end here on these threads and you can buy, you know, you can see my, my hunting one here. This has six ounces on the end. This is actually an older one of mine that I've st stolen weights off, off of. So it's only, only got one on the end, but you can add weight to the end. Now, most of these are going to be somewhere in the six to 12 inch range seems to be the most common length that guys like to shoot. And then they also come in a variety of, of widths. And as you can see, this, this one's a couple of years old. I, I really liked this bar. I, had, I shot it great. Um, I had this on my Hoyt. And then when I went to my Triax, I noticed that for some reason, I think because of the geometry of the bow being so much shorter, it did not like this 12 inch bar. So I ended up going with this newer bar of theirs. This is the Tracker series by Spider, And this is an eight inch bar. And I just noticed that when I was shooting it, the bow settled down a lot better. Um, it behaved well after and during the shot. And then the bar itself was a lot skinnier. So you can see here how much narrower the shank is on this than, than the older model. And the width is something that is just gonna achieve less wind resistance basically. So out west here where we hunt, lots of the time you're on a you know side of a mountain or you're out in a sage flat somewhere and there's usually gonna be some wind. So a narrower bar is just gonna have less wind resistance because of the, the surface area. So, you know, most stabilizers now are going with a, a slightly narrower bar. Bee Stinger's doing it with the Micro Hex. Uh, Spider's doing it with the Tracker series. Um, they still make this. This is the Predator series. And I didn't buy it any means. You know, it's not like my bow was blown clear off target, but I think any little advantage you can get in wind, in wind resistance is a good thing. So, again, you know, a lot of these bars are gonna be similar. They're all gonna be pretty stiff at this length. Uh, you might have seen the advertisements for, for some of them saying, you know, stiffest bar on the market, ultra high modulus carbon, all that stuff. And really in a bar this length, I don't think there's any need to spend $150 on the, you know, the lightest, stiffest, um, most high modulus carbon you can get because at this length, there's just, there's not going to be any flex in it. And we'll get into why that flex is important in a moment when we talk about the, the longer stabilizers, but there's a lot of different options. Um, you know, when I'm trying them out, what I'm looking for is how fast does it help my pin settle on target? And then what does my bow behave like during and after the shot? So personally, when I, when I shoot, if that bow kicks back towards me, if the top comes back towards me, when I, after I shoot, I'm gonna add a little more weight or a little more length to the bar. A shorter bar with more weight achieves a similar hold to a longer bar with less weight. So I can either play around with the amount of weight on the end or I can extend the length of the bar a little bit to make sure when I shoot, that bow stays level and or even just tips forward towards the target. And you know, I, I'm not a physicist, I don't know exactly why, but I, I've just always felt like if my arrow and my arm are moving towards the target during the shot, the bow should be moving that way too. I don't want the bow coming back to me while everything else is going forward. I think it just helps having everything moving in the same direction. So play around with it a little bit, see which one you know holds the best for you. Uh, you'll probably notice your group size will shrink pretty significantly at distance, um, going from maybe no stabilizer to really just any stabilizer. And you might notice that going from you know, at 40 yards with an eight inch bar, you have a group like that and you go to a 12 inch bar and it shrinks up to that. So different for everybody, but most pro shops are gonna have a number of these in different lengths that you can play around with and see, see what's gonna work best for you. So now we're gonna move into the 
target stabilizers. And here's where things get a little bit more technical, just because the, the length of the bar is so much longer. So this is my target setup. This is a B Stinger. This is a 30 inch front bar and I have a 12 inch back bar here. Um, pretty common lengths. Some guys are going to a 15 inch back bar now. You just get a little more leverage out behind you. And the idea of the back bar, and guys will use this for hunting too if you don't mind packing around the extra weight. I think if it makes you hold steadier and you're more confident with it and you don't mind an extra, you know, 10 ounces on your bow, I don't see why you wouldn't want to shoot one other than maybe it's just a little bulky. But for target, pretty much everybody is going to be shooting one of these. And so it'll sit on the back of the bow here and counteract all this weight on the front so that when I shoot, my bow doesn't just drop forward, you know, like a ton of bricks. And again, with the, with the length of the front bar and the length of the back bar, I think the geometry of your bow comes into it a little bit. I think you have a, if you have a really short draw length and you're shooting, you know, if it, for example, if you got a 13 or a 14 year old kid, just having this much bar on the bow just makes the overall weight of the bow a lot heavier. It's a little bit unwieldy. And so, you know, maybe try a shorter bar, like a 24 inch or a 26 inch front bar and like a, maybe a 10 or just your standard 12 inch back bar and don't load up the weight too much. So speaking of weight, um, there's a pretty simple equation to figure out the ratio of, of my, my front weight to back weight. Um, if you're just starting out, I would say, you know, start with four or five ounces on the front just so that you're not weighing down your bow a lot. And then as you shoot more and get stronger, you can start stacking more weight on these bars. But to figure out where the amount that should be on the back bar, and typically you're going to have a little bit more weight on the back than the front. And so I'm going to take the, the length of the front bar, multiply it by the amount of ounces that I'm starting with on the front, and then divide that number by the length of my, my rear bar. And that'll give me the, the number of ounces that I should start with to achieve a, what we call a zero balance, where when I hold that bow up, that bow is just gonna wanna sit level. It's not gonna wanna rock forward or backward. So that's an equation that'll just help you get started with achieving a really good zero balance. Now, let's say I start shooting and I'm noticing that my pin, when I'm, when I'm aiming, is just kind of going up and down between the top and the bottom of the dot. And it seems like even though I, I might feel like I'm holding pretty well, I'm just getting this weird little pin float up and down. That's usually a pretty good sign that you want to add a little bit more weight to your back bar. That will help that pin from wanting to bob up and down. Now conversely, if I notice that my pin float is going side to side in the spot here, try adding a little bit to your front bar. That should help that stabilizer steady up and you're gonna get a more solid hold. Now, the stiffness of these bars, this is, they, it actually really comes into play with the longer bars. Um, I would recommend spending the money on the, the lightest and stiffest bar that you can, that you can afford. And the reason for that is, if, imagine if you had a, a small wooden dowel and you glued a baseball on the end of it, and then you swung that dowel out like this and just stopped your hand. With a really skinny dowel with all that weight on the end, even though my hand stops, that dowel is still going to go like this before it finally settles down. Now if I took that same baseball and glued it to a 2x4 and brought it out and stopped, because the, the 2x4 is so much stiffer, it's not going to flex and deflex and flex and reflex and boom back and forth. It's just going to stop. So that's where a really stiff bar comes into play in these, these uh, target stabilizers. And for example, this, this B Stinger is a couple of years old. They've actually come out with some really cool ones since then that are their smaller diameter, again, achieving less wind drift and less wind resistance. And then they're noticeably stiffer. And I was actually playing with a buddies the other day and I didn't realize how long it was taking my pin to settle down. And when I say long, I'm talking two or three seconds maybe, but I, would, I didn't realize how long my pin was kind of bouncing around until I put his new ones on and I was amazed, you know, I drew back and that stabilizer just, thunk, I mean, it just sat there. That pin just calmed down immediately. And that's important to me because generally speaking, you know, those first three to five seconds of your hold are going to be the steadiest. That's when you're going to, you know, you're going to be in that back wall. You're going to be rolling through the shot. So if I have to wait for, 
you know, three or five seconds just to get my pin to steady down and then I can really start my hard aim, to me that's a disadvantage. So I want a pin that's going to settle down as fast as I can, I can get it to, and then I can just start my hard aim and rolling through my shot. So hopefully that helps you a little bit in choosing a bar. Like I said, there's a lot of options out there. Uh, Bee Stinger, Doinker, um, uh, this is, or these are Bee Stingers. My hunting bars are, are spiders. They make tournament bars as well. There's a lot of good ones out there. So, you know, again, just look for the stiffest bar you can afford. Most stabilizer companies are gonna have different grades, kind of different levels of stiffness. Um, I'm not saying, you know, there was a lot of tournaments, one with a long time, for a long time with just the old aluminum rods and, you know, a bunch of stainless steel stacked at the end that, I mean, they feel like a fishing rod in your hand nowadays, but they still worked. Obviously, you know, the, the biggest thing is just time behind the bow practicing, but any advantage you can get in helping hold that bow steady, I think is worth, worth spending a little bit of money on. So I hope this video helps you in choosing a stabilizer. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, feel free to comment if you have any questions on on whether you should you know be using a back bar or or the angle of the bars. Again, it's going to be really different for everybody, but I'll do my best to help you help you get dialed in. Um, until next time, remember precision is a decision, and I'll see you on the range.